of the mayor's office, so the mayor couldn't protect uh, as a, uh, any of the uh, you know, uh, misconduct when it was discovered. Uh, we also created a, uh, a, 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 a civilian oversight commission where we were able to have representation from the whole community and really let the community have a voice in how their neighborhoods would be policed. And then and we, we, got, we made every police officer have to go through uh, uh, de-escalation training recognize when people had psychological crises or, or, or from a different culture, didn't speak the language. Uh, we made sure they had uh, less lethal tools to, to, to settle dif difficult issues. Uh, one of the most important things that Alec Cave did, that we did together, was we, we created something he called the discipline matrix. And for the first time, we could hold police officers that, that, that committed serious misconduct, we could really punish them, we could fire them, uh, instead of just always giving them a slap on the wrist. And I, I could know, I mean, when you're a mayor, you get to know police officers, and there are, you know, almost all police officers are hardworking, good, good people of integrity. But it doesn't take very many bad apples to create tragedies that tear apart families and communities. And this is all, we got all this done 10 years before Ferguson. Uh, and I think to this day, uh, Denver is a place where not perfect, and it's not hard to find problems in any community, but the relationship between the community and the police is up and down, but, but generally I think on an upward tra trajectory. Now I'll tell you, so I did that for, I was mayor for eight years, and I, one of the things I did, I got all the mayors to work together, two thirds of them are Republicans. That's kind of tricky, getting the Republican <laughs> mayors to work with Democrats. We got the Republican mayors to, to agree to tax themselves to build some transit, so we wouldn't have so much traffic so many traffic jams. Uh, I used that kind of collaborative effort as a model to run for governor. And in 2010, I, I became the first Denver mayor to get elected governor right. in, in 120 years, right? That's how long that people had hated Denver, Denver been at war with everybody. You know, and then we, we went to work, we were 40th in job creation. We went to work with the whole state, the rural parts of the state, the small towns, the big cities like Denver and Colorado Springs, we got, we, we turned around the economy for everybody. The last two years, we've been the number one economy in America. And I think, we'll see for 2018, I think we're gonna be the number one rural economy in America. Because we said we wouldn't leave them behind. By the end of, of 2020, we will have broadband in every single city and town in the state of Colorado. We'll be the first state to have done that, which is the, that's the basic investment. <laughs> And I look at what's happened today in America, where we have a, a president that is, has almost bankrupted our, our, our healthcare system mm -hmm. and is sanctioning American agents to tear children from the arms of their mothers and actually end up putting them up for adoption. I don't know what you call it down here. In Colorado, we call that kidnapping. Yes. <laughs> right? And we have a, 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 a president who has literally attacked every institution of government. He's attacked it, he's literally attacked anyone who disagrees with him, mm -hmm. right? War heroes, federal judges, it doesn't matter. He is at, at, at the point where he is threatening our democracy. Mm -hmm. And I look at it as, you know, we have to defeat Donald Trump. Yes. I mean, we don't have a choice. I don't think it's sufficient, right? We gotta defeat Donald Trump, but I wanna be the person that comes and brings people together on the other side. And I was, you know, when I got those mayors to work together, when I got those restaurant owners to work together, when I was governor, we got the environmental community to sit down with the oil and gas industry, and we got the oil and gas industry to take responsible, responsibility for what they call fugitive emissions. That's all that methane that escapes from tanks, you see it flaring. That's about the worst climate change gas there is. And we got them to agree to pay 60 million bucks a year and, 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 and make sure there was no escapes at all. It's the equivalent of taking 320,000 automobiles a year off the roads, right? And I think that, that history of actually being able to demonstrate that you can get people together, put down their weapons, and get things done. We're, Colorado's almost 100% healthcare coverage. 
And more importantly than that, I think we're getting to the point where we've got to be able to imagine a, a future where there's transparency. When you want to go, if your kids got to get their tonsils out, why should it be a surprise what your copay is going to be, whether you go to one hospital or another, or one clinic or another, right? Walmart has 140,000 different products. You include all the different colors, they've got about 450,000 SKUs, you know, individual little things. They can tell you the price of every one, right? And yet our doctors and our hospitals, it's too complicated, they say. Well, how are we ever going to control costs? How come it is if you've got, if you've got diabetes and you need insulin, the insulin you buy here in this country is 30 times more expensive than what they pay in Canada. And let me guarantee you that the science that made that insulin the miracle drug that it is, I bet you most of that science was happened in this country, and I bet a large part of it was paid for by our government. And yet we have to pay 30 times more. I think you know, President Trump has been defending that stuff, the, 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 the cronyism, the insider deals for the big corporations long enough. And I look at my experience both in the you know, as a small business person, my experience as mayor, my experience as governor, and I felt like, you know, I felt like I, of all those senators, and I appreciate people as judges and senators, I appreciate all you do. Senators, I mean, they're in Washington, they're trying to find the, the best ideas, they're dreamers. I, I'm a dreamer, but I'm also a doer. And I think at this point, we gotta, we gotta put somebody up against Trump who can show a consistent record of getting progressive things done. Right? and delivering on a vision of how we're gonna be able to get to a point where, where families, can, families can go to bed at night knowing that they're not gonna have, you know, they're not one serious illness away from bankruptcy. But families can be able to, when they hear shots fired in the night, not worry that those shots are gonna come down on them. Where we're able to have a, uh, create a whole new generation of the greatest Americans. And, and that be our young people that actually create the innovations and the ability to, to, to deal with climate change so that we don't really ruin this planet. I think at this point, at this moment in time, we're at a, at a crisis, as I said, a, a crisis of division. And, and the only solution after we beat Trump <laughs> is to get people working together on this stuff. But once the election's over, and I know I'm talking to a room full of Democrats, but once the election's over, we're all going to have to roll up our sleeves and work together. If we're going to deal with control and the, the, the incredible cost of health care that's been, in, you know, the inflation's been, for decades it's been going up. If we're going to deal with, with climate change, we're going to deal with jobs, right? We've got to get focused on not just creating the jobs, but making sure people have the skills, that everybody has the skills to get good jobs, because it hasn't been happening. Anyway, that's my pledge to you. That people say, well, it's impossible. And actually, my staff hates it when I tell this story. It doesn't stop me. <laughs> when I ran for mayor, nobody gave me a snowball's chance of winning. I was at 2 or 3%, and then I was at 4% for about seven weeks. I had all these young volunteers that are all fired up, and I they get discouraged. So I carry this clipping in my wallet from the Denver Post. And it was a, a story about a professor of public speaking up at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, Wyoming, and she was talking about the importance of using opposites. You talk about the worst of times, you talk about the best of times. If you're gonna talk about the agony, talk about the ecstasy. That the words would gain emotional impact by being close together. She asked her students, what, what's the opposite of despair? The kid raised her hand and goes, joy? She goes, exactly, you wanna feel despair, use joy in the same sense, you create emotional impact. Then she said, what's the opposite of, what's the opposite of woe? And the kid way in the back raised his hand and goes, Giddy up! <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, the opposite of all is to giddy up right now, right? And once we get rid of Trump and get him out of office, we're going to link arms, roll up our sleeves, and we're going to change this country for the better once and for all. Now you're going to embarrass me. 